In Spider-Man the Animated Series, it's revealed that Spider-Man gaining his spider powers was just the start, and that that spider bite actually started a mutation that's going to mutate him further. And at first this means that he grows four extra arms, giving him eight limbs in total, just like a spider. And of course, giving him some extra strength, as extra arms would obviously make you stronger. And he later mutates further into a man spider, which I actually liked as a kid, but as an adult I think it actually looks pretty terrifying. I mean, just imagine that in live action. It'd be the stuff of nightmares. But when he's mutated, his spider powers are of course all super enhanced, making him even stronger, faster, and having organic webs. Though sadly, his mind degrades, and he basically becomes a mindless beast. Though luckily, he has some super scientist friends who are able to cure him of this condition. He is also transformed into a giant spider in the comics on a few occasions, such as when a woman named the Spider Queen causes him to mutate into one. And again, his powers are greater, but he loses his mind and looks like a monster, and is basically the Spider Queen's slave. Though of course he does get turned back to normal later on. But when he transforms back into a human, he has a few new powers. Namely, he has organic webs, which was made to tie in with the Tobey Maguire films, though fans did dislike this, and so he lost them soon after. And he also had stingers for a while, which basically would bust out of his arms like Wolverine's claws, and they had a poison on him that he could stab people with. And this poison could be weak and just incapacitate someone, or it could be strong enough to kill someone, as Spider-Man used it to kill Morlun, a supposedly immortal supernatural creature. So the venom is pretty strong. And in a what-if story called Arachnophosis, which I think I'm pronouncing correctly, but forgive me if I'm not, Spider-Man transforms into a monstrous spider creature once more. Though in this, it seems that it wasn't because he was bitten by a radioactive spider, but because he was actually a mutant, just like the X-Men. And it's a condition which his son has sadly inherited. And later on in the story, he unfortunately is beaten to death by a mob, who basically hate mutants, and hate spider mutants even more. And in Ultimate Spider-Man, Spider-Man is hit by a dart, and he is infected with a Savage Land poison, and transforms him into a man-spider. And he turns into pretty much the same creature, his brain is degraded, but he is now stronger. In fact, he's strong enough to beat up a T-Rex on his own. And in the show Spider-Man Unlimited, where Spider-Man is on an alternate Earth filled with human-animal hybrids, the High Evolutionary tries to change him into a giant spider. And he does partly succeed as he does turn into a giant spider, though Spider-Man is able to stop and reverse the transformation pretty quickly. He has also been shrunk down by pin particles on a few occasions, though this doesn't really give him any new superpowers, other than being small enough to get into places he normally couldn't, such as inside Nick Fury's body to destroy nanobots that are in his bloodstream. And of course, whenever Spider-Man is merged with a symbiote, he is transformed as well. Sometimes this is a very subtle transformation, sometimes it's quite a drastic one. And Spider-Man has been with a lot of different symbiotes over the years, but basically he becomes stronger, faster, and the suit also makes special, stronger webbing for him. And in some versions, he can morph the suit into any clothing he likes, which for a superhero is really useful when you need to put on your superhero outfit. Though since the symbiotes increase aggression and violent behavior like nuts, he never really stays bonded to them for very long. And during the Holt Out Heroes comic story, a number of superheroes were exposed to the same mutating gamma radiation that Bruce Banner was when he was transformed into the Hulk. And so, the heroes transformed themselves into their own versions of the Hulk. And there were actually some pretty good Hulk designs, though the best ones were really Wolverine and Thor. But Spider-Man was also transformed into a Spider-Hulk. Though sadly his design is pretty much the same as normal, He's still in his spider suit, he's just become bigger and stronger, and the suit is stretched out because of this. Whereas personally, I would have liked him to rip out of the suit a bit more, but that's just my opinion. Now, Spider-Man doesn't go as nuts as the Hulk does. His IQ is lowered, and presumably has a Hulk healing factor, endurance, and of course the insane strength that the Hulk has. And when you combine this with a spider's proportional strength, this probably makes him stronger than the Hulk is. Now, the heroes later had the radiation sucked out of them by Bruce Banner, which is good because one of the villains does say that the radiation wasn't safe, and that otherwise they'd be dead within 24 hours. And in a what-if story where the Punisher wipes out most of the Marvel Universe, and quite a lot of the people on Earth, the world is exposed to a virus that makes them bigger and stronger, but it also makes people primitive in mind. It's kind of like a devolution virus, making us all into our more less-evolved selves, 
and the world descends into a primitive jungle-like chaos. And in this universe, Spider-Man is, again, basically just bigger, stronger and faster. And still just a big muscly guy in his usual spider suit. Though he is a bit dumber and more primitive, even at one point attempting to eat the rhino after defeating him. Now I do have to say that Spider-Man has been in literally thousands of comics since he was created in the 60s. And he's also been in a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows. So it's possible that one or two powers have been missed. I have of course tried to get them all, but if there are any other times that you know of that you think should have been mentioned, then please let us all know in the comments. Along with which one of these times was your favourite, and if there are any other superpowers that you want Spider-Man to get in the future. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.